And hello, welcome back to the Agostino Zynga Show with me, your host, Agostino Zynga. This is episode number 311. That's 311. How you doing? How you feeling? Good, great, amazing. Hope you feel good, great and nice. Um, if you're watching this via the YouTube, you'll definitely see me perspiring and leaking somewhat. Do not be alarmed. I just come back in from a four-mile run this, after, or this evening, actually. I ended up doing it quite late in the day because I wanted to avoid any possibility of me contracting no not contracting not contracting covid but more so any possibility of me uh put myself in a position where my allergies flare up because it tends you know when the sun is out and everyone's hanging out and the pollen count is high my nasal passage just goes start sneezing all over the place start heezing my chest kind of feels all tight and weird that's not really the best thing in the world but yeah um i decided to go out quite late the first time I've done it actually later in the evening I left about what 9 I think or 8pm um, ended up doing my little 4 mile run caught back in I think I did it in about what four, 35 minutes did like a 4 mile run just around the block average pace of around 8 minutes 36 per mile still a bit off where I want to be but you know better than nothing and yeah sorry but surely I'm kind of getting there I think running at my kind of overall size and height and shit at the moment is probably not the best thing to do i should probably need to lose a couple more lbs before i'm at the optimal weight that i need to be in order to perform but it's still my f- most favorite activity even though it brings me a lot of pain even though it's something that i don't really enjoy in the moment once i finish i'm like oh that was excellent you know what i mean i really really look forward to it I look forward to it once I'm doing it I'm like I wish I didn't do it but then once I finished it I'm like I thank god I did that so that's usually you know how most things are um I try and lead into things that kind of make me a bit uncomfortable things that make me a little bit a little bit uneasy I try and do those first in order to kind of make sure I got uh the day started in a good way or at least I have one little small win and especially even under circumstances given that we're all at home and we're all kind of you know living this uh we're in this kind of collective despair or we're not essentially doing the things we want to do if you have some level of some semblance of a routine in your life that you can do definitely try and do that just to make things a little bit more bearable um if not then i just guess you just have to you know keep your eyes glued to the tv and hope boris says you know the streets are free go out and gallivant which is still not a good idea to do anyway because you know who wants to be the first one to head out and start you know doing your thing when stuff mutates and things changes um but yeah so far so good running has been excellent like i said i'm running using those um hooker one ring cons actually this is the picture i took from my strava can you see it on there i'm actually bringing it up on my screen it's actually a quite a cool picture in it usually i'm not really a big fan of those little lamp things they have on trees and city centers but you know when you haven't been out so long and you're hanging around looking at people everything looks quite exotic and even a cracker across the street looks quite fun and interesting you're like oh hey how are you why is your skin all flaky then you know like is that eczema or is it the fact that you don't drink water <laughs> you know um those things always seem like they're of, they're of interest and now me looking up at these little weird tree um decorations somehow now i've turned into that kind of cucky person who takes pictures of lights and trees but hey corona you know has made me into a person that i'm ashamed to be but you know it is what it is i'm accepting that side of me um but apart from that what else has been happening nothing else in it there's no real update um i think as of today, six nine broke the internet, right? He had a bit of a, he had a, he had an interesting, yeah, he's had an interesting twenty four hours or so, hasn't he? Right? He dropped a video, announced a live, live, broke the record on that, blah blah blah. People are going crazy, so that seems to have caught everyone's attention on the interwebs. Um, I for one don't really care to be honest. It is what it is. He's doing his thing. Let him, you know. Um, I think people getting all hot and bothered, especially hip hop is the moral police and hip-hop always made me laugh really in it like you know some people are allowed to you know uh step out on their wives and the mother of their children if they're co-parenting in the most outlandish disrespectful ways you know not give a shit about their children um fuck over their partners who came up with them in the game uh sign their friends onto bad deals uh, you know generally just do some really shady shit and not really cause it out for the most part you're still allowed to exist and have a career but this guy gets involved in some criminal activity and as criminals are in it criminals in general you know people that do bad things people that abide by the street code there is an element of that kind of scene where people are just shitty people in it 
you just inter- you just interact with the worst of society um generally right there are some occasions where you might bump into a boss you might bump into somebody who's who classifies themselves as a general who's actually you know running shit and doing you know doing things by the by in a good way but for the most part you run into some really really um dodgy characters when you're living that kind of street life so nothing should be a surprise nothing should be a shock everything is fair game in that respect some way shape or form again don't get me wrong what he did morally isn't the best thing you know and if you're i think if he's if he would have come out and said hey i'm going to specifically snitch on the people who did me wrong fair enough but the fact that he included the other dude who i think is a coup to be the one that he essentially um gave money to to shoot as to shoot out who's his name um chief keith i'm assuming that yeah definitely was i think it was chief keith um he paid that kid to go and attempt essentially try and assassinate chief keith it didn't work it didn't well it, it, that kid wasn't successful and then he got picked up for it and he ends up telling the police about it like i don't see how you can get away with that really you know witness protect i mean being an informant for the police is really strange you essentially it's a get out free jail card it kind of reminds me of like filing a bankruptcy right in some respect you can rack up on a massive amount of debt and of course you're gonna have to you know your credit score is fucked up for the best part of seven years and all that stuff or maybe more um but essentially you get the chance to rack up as many as much debt as you want max out all these credit cards be responsible with your finances and then if you declare bankruptcy everything is kind of uh everything is sort of like okay and you can kind of start again from scratch snitching is sort of the same thing it seems like in the um, united states uh justice system it's a very dodgy very strange thing because it's not as if like you know i don't know unless maybe what he snitched upon is allowed the police to bring down an entire network like globally of these kind of gangsters but essentially what those crips that he was hanging out with in new york they were what mostly on the east coast it wasn't was it even a nationwide thing did they have cells in other parts of the world were they situated somewhere in like colombia and shit i don't think so right it was mostly like a, a thing you know in hood whatever it may be so it's not as if the police are gaining that much insight from what he's telling them unless they didn't have a case at all and he was the one that was filling in all the blanks and that's different but it's still strange isn't it, that you can do a crime be involved in it because i think there's even videos of him running out of the car with a gun and shit like jacking people it's just bizarre that he just yeah as long as you tell you get you're fine you can you can resume your life as normal i think that's what people are annoyed with really and if everything else is like it's whatever in it um i think he would feel it, it, it i guess it's personal preference you know whatever you stand on the matter but if you would have said hey i'm gonna switch on this dude because he slept with my child's mother i'm gonna switch on this guy because he tried to kill me okay you would have a you know you have to you'd have to kind of consult your own moral compass because i think there's quite a few of those mob guys that sit on that have interviews with that guy value tainment who are similar in that kind of way right most of those mob guys that tell their story are usually due to snitch or cooperate with the police it's rarely the people that sit down and tell all the people that are all kind of you know um, by the book by the you know, by the nature of it who kept quiet and just kept it moving because you will not want to talk to anyone and then you just want to keep it yourself so if you want to go and talk to somebody it's mostly because you cooperated and you know if everything's already um been documented or recorded or put into file you know um the case is closed and that one you can't be judged again but yeah i don't know man it's a strange one really i just don't think it's that big of an issue but i guess um there's a weird sort of a cultural clash happening now in hip-hop at the moment especially with the new kids and the old guard i guess all oh, the new kids and the people who deem themselves as like you know um or how they what they call them hip-hop historians there's like a culture clash because the kids coming up now don't really know who africa bombata is right they just want they just want to hear good tunes they don't care about the history of hip-hop they don't know anything about graffiti or breakdancing element of it or the dj element of it they just want to be entertained and listen to good music so that side of things is competing now with you know the people who do hold um hip-hop as this kind of wouldn't say it's maybe that's a hallowed thing to them right there's something a little bit more it means more than just a a cdq tune or a stream on spotify it means more to them right so that means and there's things attached to that culture whether it's again b-boy djing graffiti um radio mixtapes uh baseball caps there's things that's just attached to it that are just ingrained to them they can never let go and then part of it is the kind of element that you know it's a music that came from a disenfranchised minority group 
who were kind of using it as a gateway to get out of this situation that they were in, right? Trying to get to a better place. Um, and because he spent most of your time on the streets, he might have got involved in some, you know, sticky things, some illegal things, but you don't necessarily, you know, and then there's a street code attached to that too that enables people to uh, maneuver in the hip-hop industry because part of the things they learn, a lot of the things I guess you would learn being on the streets and drugs, being in a gang, would kind of relate and relate itself quite well into how you operate in corporate world, isn't it? Obviously, you can't, there's no element in corporate world or in, you know, in the kind of uh, legit world where you can essentially uh, get your will by threats of violence or by enacting physical violence, you have to kind of play the political game. But by and large, some of the dirty deeds that you see on the street definitely get mirrored within the corporate offices. So some of that stuff is, you know, essential. But a lot of those codes, you're going to hold them dear to your heart in it. Like no snitching, not speaking about another man's pockets, trying to have work that's always kind of uh, rotating on the street, keeping your name hot. Da, 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 having head on the swivel and knowing how to fight blah 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 there's all these kind of things that are attached to it um so it's interesting to see the culture clash happening in it um but again i have sympathy for both ends i think if you're just a fan that just likes to hear what he has to say and you want to get you know crunk and bob your head and stuff then fair enough enjoy it if you're somebody that thinks the fundamentals and the pillars of hip-hop are being um pissed up pissed upon right they're being disregarded and people are not taking that stuff seriously anymore and you're annoyed by it i understand that too but i don't know i think there's room for both of those perspectives to exist i think i don't think there's it's either it's either or but he did explain himself i thought pretty well regarding the whole situation he kind of explained that essentially he snitched on or he reason why he told because he felt as if he wasn't um people weren't being loyal to him and you know he feels as if um, he didn't owe them anything because they essentially stabbed him in the back by the actions that they did which you know is really you really have to consult again you have to consult your own moral compass as to what you think is the truth in that respect um i don't think that's actually accurate you know i think he's kind of conflating a lot of things and being over over simplistic about the issue because you know part of the reason why he was successful and part of the reason why that stuff worked is because he did play up to this idea that he was this you know teflon don super hard gangster dude right he wasn't he didn't tell us that it was all a marketing gimmick he didn't inform about that we just knew about this after the fact or if you were kind of paying attention you found out but it was never implicitly said hey i'm just doing this for views it was always like i'm about this life this is what i'm doing bloody blah, blah 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 i'll shoot you i'll kill you i'll come to your hood i'll film a video at two in the morning jeremy he was kind of um, doing that stuff in order to paint himself one way because he was confident enough in the people that he paid to be part of his entourage that nothing was going to happen to him because they were you know ride or die and they were really about that life and they would kind of take it to the nth degree if needed as they proved in many instances that were you know recorded and documented and spoke about in court so i think he was, he's kind of conflating it and being a bit over simplistic but again he's a marketing genius he's a master at kind of manipulating and twisting the narrative to fit his own story and if anything he's a product of this generation really isn't it? he's exactly the kind of artist that the generation sort of deserves and if anything you know who can't remind you of do you remember the, there's that video clip of um or it's a story of that ai of that computer generated influencer that just i think recently got signed to like an agency like a legit one that's what he reminds me of she's like an amalgamation of everything that people like on social kind of representing this kind of avatar this sort of like ai uh virtual reality sort of like you know computer generated image of one influencer looks like right from the freckles to the way her eyes are to the freaking choker thing to a little pose that she does how she stares at the camera there's there's things that they kind of analyzed took in all the best bits of all the influencers on social and put them to one, one person and i guess if you were trying to make an archetype of a rapper nowadays right especially in the kind of clickbait um uh, disposable um instagram ready sort of person he would be the perfect one in it like especially if you just look at him from like a portrait mode on a phone his video he's, he's compelling viewing you can't take your eyes off it right from the hair to the grills to the girls in the back to all the pain and shit to the silly lyrics to the really simplistic beats are very um they're not you know they're, they're, they're not like um they're not obstructive they don't they don't kind of inst they don't um elicit a kind of negative reaction doesn't when you hear bad music it kind of makes you want to turn it off the first snare or the first kick drum his music is so whatever that it's either you go hard for it and you bob your head or you just let it play because it's two minutes right it doesn't necessarily it doesn't 
you know disturb your ruin your flow it sort of just comes and it plays and the word is what it is it's sort of the thing where if you heard it on a shuffle on your spotify you would just let it play out you wouldn't jump and go and skip it to the next song um so i think he's perfect for now because he just fits directly into what they want and again if he's able to kind of keep up this bravado and talk the way he talks then maybe it's going to work out for him but i don't know you you would have, you would have thought after everything he's gone through he would just would have kind of wanted to keep his head down and do that but again you know i think what we've learned about the internet and what we've learned about social media is that once you have a thing whether it's negative or positive you just have to lean into it everyone that's successful or or let's say that everyone that everyone anyone on social or public figure or an influencer that people especially the ones that people hate because i think the successful ones are a bit hard to quite quantify because you know people's fandom is a bit hard to rationalize on some way shape or form but i think the ones that people are detest the ones people think are like oh this guy's an idiot he doesn't know what he's talking about she's dumb he's she's disgusting he's not this da, da, da. usually they have a thing like a common thing like two of like one one to three character traits that really irk people and those character traits that irk people they usually lean into it so that that vocal minority that hates you keeps speaking about you keeps you know drumming up the interest makes other people come and check out your stuff and then they might think you know what you're not that bad and then suddenly you've got new fans so in in um without them realizing uh haters are kind of essentially your best asset in that respect if you're an influencer that doesn't again you have to be a certain breed you have to be able to uh be will you have to be the kind of person that can uh, withstand or absorb that kind of level of scrutiny online because i think you know i'm never nowhere on this kind of level of attention but i would imagine if you're that kind of person your notifications are going off there's a tendency uh, or a temptation to check what people are saying you scroll down your mentions you see a couple of good stuff and then it's three or four horrible hurtful comments come there from randoms you kick on a picture it's actually a real person he looks like he could fuck you up like it can really fuck with your head in it so you'd have to be a person that can handle people speaking about you in a really negative manner consistently on a consistent basis like anytime you make a mistake they're just waiting for you to fuck up and i guess i must play in your head in it if you're just living your everyday life they must be in your head because you know we are one of this i think some people say it i think elon musk said it the other day with the on joe reagan podcast he said uh whenever you leave your phone at home it's all like phantom limb syndrome and you feel like something's missing you have to run back into your house sometimes i've left my my flat and i've kind of walked down the street and i forgot i've had my phone and i've walked back in got in the lift got to my floor opened the door do you know what i mean like you you'll make some really crazy decisions just because you want to get your phone back right um so i guess it takes a certain person to want to be that character job but like i said like i think if you're not a fan of his the best thing you can do is just ignore what he does just not bring any attention to it don't watch or stream anything but the moment you start talking about his stuff even just in a roundabout way even if you start doing that really cuck thing that people do when they don't want to mention someone's name and they start putting the stars the asterisks on their name it's still going to make people curious about what he's doing right it, inevitably like even if he wasn't following him on social you would have heard people complaining or people kind of praising the fact that you no know, most are complaining because you don't really hear if people unless it's drake you don't really hear people or even maybe kendrick you don't hear people on social that much actually praising something they're into it's never usually that it's usually just you know them complaining about someone they don't like so whenever you hear that your instant thing is to go and check it out right i think the mate, same thing might have happened with Lil Nas X even right some people hated that old old town road and then you check it out you know oh, actually this thing's a bop and then you continue being his friend or you continue being a fan of his but yeah it's an interesting uh conundrum i've got to play a bit of the ig live that he did actually where he's ragging and being aggressive online as per usual And, I've, and I'm hoping, like this is just a hope, I'm hoping that, you know, no one rags on the girls involved in a video. Because we do live in a world where, you know, I could see it happening where people like start, you know, sending mad abuse to those girls that are involved in the video. How can you hang out with the snitch? It's like, look, they just work in a job. They're independent contractors. People have to make their money. Strip clubs of clothes. They can't do walkthroughs anymore in clubs. 
it is what it is, and let them get their coin and keep it moving. I don't think the girls should be kind of getting lambasted in this if they are going to. I don't know. Maybe his girlfriend will because she's a bit of a troll herself, but she's probably built for it. But the rest of them allowed him in it. Let's them come for the let's see where, where he is actually. For a bit. <laughs> it's an interesting way to start an IG live in it. as well but he seems really riled up in it i guess again maybe because of his percep his uh perception or the way he kind of goes about on social you would imagine that he wouldn't have been bothered but it seems as if he was generally annoyed by what people are saying about him on social which is strange because he seems like he understands why people would be hating him because he snitched but he still seems annoyed that people don't accept the reasons that he did it which is odd too, isn't it? Because you must accept that there's some people out there who are abide by the street code and no matter what someone does, even if somebody shot your mum point blank in her bedroom as she was sleeping, you would never be able to, you should never, that's a code, isn't it? You just, once you in that life and you make the fucking blood oath, whatever it is, or you get jumped in, that is what you commit to. You commit to a life where you can never involve law enforcement in any of your affairs that's just what it is we all know that even you know civilians like myself so i'm not sure why he's so angry about the whole issue it just seemed very strange um uh he must have known what was going to happen and again maybe it's because he wants to paint this narrative that he was this like young innocent boy that got coerced into joining a gang and you know they used him as a cash cow but he's he's the one that went to get them he's he seek them out they didn't come to him that's the thing that makes the story even more tragic he went to go he went to go find the the most um legit uh real yeah the most legit kind of ready to go guys in his hood that would be willing to kind of stand behind him in music videos and make him look tough and then he would that because that's enough and if you're going to do that that's fair enough use him as props cool but then he started to get involved in their business. He started to lean on them more. They started to extort him. Then this weird back and forth starts. And then, you know, essentially you're in a gang now. And you can't say you're not because you're part of it. You're enjoying the kind of notoriety. I'm assuming if he's walking down the street and people are kind of, you know, when he walks into a room, it's a different kind of energy. He's loving all that. Thing. He's getting all that, all that kind of hood love. He's loving it. The kind of... Um, the respect of others uh the fact that maybe he might have been you know i don't know he might have been able to get his own back on someone that you know jumped him back in the day by the fact that he's associated with these dudes so i don't know why he's so mad that's the thing that's interesting he's really angry now again it could be just fear he's actually really worried for his life now because he's now stuck his head out of um you know he's head over the fence and sort of let everyone know what that he's alive and he's about and what he's going to do and it's only going to get worse from now on in terms of the attention in terms of the scrutiny um but what did you expect my guy yeah you know i mean get, you must get cool <laughs> we broke the record what happened That's a million. That never. See, he seems really angry. He's really riled up, and I think the fun, maybe it's just a, you know, the competitive energy that he has because he's always been about numbers, and he's always been telling people how many streams he got. He broke that record. Did this. So that's just a standard thing. But it could also it's also strange because I can understand this reaction if this was back in the day when we record labels mattered and when industry people mattered and when radio spends mattered that would be an instant reaction because you know if he was in the same situation 20 years ago the industry could have essentially killed his career if they wanted to right like but with the advent of the internet and social media you can effectively do what you are you are effectively uncountable if you've got fans 
that's what I've discovered. I think cancel culture is officially over if you have actual real fans. Because I think most people that get cancelled, unfortunately, especially if they haven't done anything too heinous, they don't actually have real fans. They have people that, you know, are interested and check out what they do. Like, oh, cool, he did that, she did this. But they don't actually have real fans that will buy what they do, um, you know, without even thinking about it. And I think he has legit fans who will ride and die for him regardless of what he does. Like, in a similar vein of, like, a YouTuber. YouTubers have real fans, right? They go to a comedy club, they sell it out. They do an event, they sell it out. They do a tour, they sell it out. They put a product out, they sell it out. Because those fans will buy whatever. There's, I'm sure there's fans of some youtubers who don't even especially the makeup ones i'm sure there's some kids out there who just buy youtubers palettes and stuff um just to buy them just because they want to have it in their collection and show that they're actually part of the community and they want to feel like they're giving they're supporting their favorite artists to keep doing their favorite sorry content creator to keep doing what they're doing so i think that kind of reaction that he has now would be justified if it was if it was back in the day because he would have felt as if like the industry is essentially uh putting him out of a job right they're essentially putting him into a corner where he has no other option but to do a life of crime again because he's got no way of making any legit money because you know once he's out of prison now especially um in, uh, regarding what he got himself into he's not like he's gonna get a normal job in it no one wants to have that kind of negative attention on you on them plus the face tattoos he's only got one avenue that he can kind of operate in that's that like being on the internet being a kind of you know divisive figure doing music influence or whatever he's only got that one industry so i guess if you were if this was 20 years ago and this happened and yeah i understand the reaction but nowadays it doesn't matter he can essentially he could do whatever he could fight into a microphone for 22 minutes and it would still probably put up numbers so I don't really see why he's so like aggressive with it. That's four. That got one. That wouldn't even get one. Well, maybe, maybe because, maybe because he spent two years in, or in, essentially in prison too. That might be part of it as well. Do you know what I mean, <laughs> fearing for his life every day. So that could be also a reason why he's super angry. <laughs> But they said he was flossing anyway from the time he stepped out on it. Like he bought four Lamborghinis and shit. But let's talk about it. Let's go through for, for what he's talking about here. Yo, y'all watch the video? Oh, yeah. He spoke about someone here. Yeah, let's move on a bit. Come on, load, load, load. Oh, right here. Okay. I'm gonna take this off real quick. I'm gonna give you back this watch. Over a half a million. Why? We can't beef. I broke the YouTube. I'm at 5 million views in one hour. Y'all can't even get 100,000 views. Listen, listen. We can't beef. There's no beef. I'm the king. Y'all know this. Listen. You know the legendary shit that I be talking about? You know why people so mad? Because they thought it was over for me. They counted me out. Oh, yo, you, yo, you ratted, da -da -da, it's over for you. Y'all could never. Y'all could never cooperate with the government and come back. Y'all can never do that. I'm a living legend at the age of 24 years old. You hear me? Look at the look at these 1.6 million. And a legend. Can you be a legend after having a career for what? Two years? Is that possible? Maybe. I don't know. Legendary status will probably be 10 years plus, right? In the game. Consistent. Because, you know, part of the maybe resentment some of those artists would have is that he done all these funny all these games and essentially he's put himself in a position where if he keeps getting involved in nonsense it will just keep is that, is that a fact if he keeps getting involved in nonsense it will just extend his longevity of his career maybe i don't know because if he actually just settled that if he just focused and just did music and didn't do the nonsense on social which is not something because it's part of his id but imagine if uh, uh, uh an assumption would be that if he just put music out every year that every year from now on the interest would wane because part of the reason why it, your interest is because of the antics he, he's not good enough as a musician to just to enable him to keep reinventing himself year after year or album after album like other artists have to and kind of have to do similar to the kind of sticker a lot of people were giving um jay electronica right the fact that he was able he was allowed to sort of like leave after one tape have this retain his reputation not get held the same standard as everybody else he doesn't have to like step in the ring he doesn't have to perform he doesn't have to make songs he didn't have to you know fight with the times um 
you know, struggle with the streaming uh, era. He doesn't have to do all of that. And then he's still got the backing of the industry. And when he comes back in, he gets a, essentially a, a massive layup by having this secret album planned with Jay-Z, one of the biggest hip artists in the world. So some of the resentment comes from, Jay Electronica comes from that too, right? It's not like an even playing field. But that's just it, innit? Life isn't fair, unfortunately, innit? It is what it is. What can you do? Um, I don't know. Like, what can you say? Like, it just isn't fair. He was, he's able, again... He's, he's learned from the YouTubers. He's able to kind of lean into whatever negative trait people don't like about him and just been able to exploit it for his gain. Again, he could be right. He might be a legend. I don't think he is. After two years of success, I think, you know, you have to kind of probably be in the game for, you know, to use DJ Mustard's adage of 10 summers and then you could probably be regarded as a legend. But, you know, considering the numbers he got, considering the traction he gets. And again, if we're in an industry where it seems like even though there's the internet, even if people have fans and they have Patreons and you can get money on AdSense, it seems that still the prevailing the prevailing metric of success is still, you know, streams, album sales, uh, money, possess, all these kind of like things that the industry tells you that you should be valuing are the things that artists value more so than how their music kind of like touches people, its longevity, bloody blah 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 like most of it is based on those kind of you know arbitrary numbers so if he smashed those arbitrary numbers and someone like Meek Mill was upset by him actually being able to do it it would basically prove his point that you know he might be a legend I don't know shout out to Tory shout out to Drake shout out to Bad Bunny y'all niggas can never stop playing with me stop playing with me look at this 1.6 million 1.6 1.6 million. We can't beef. Me and y'all not the same. King of Wit. Why well, keep hearing King of New York, King of New York? Y'all not the kings of New York. Look at the numbers. Oh, well, he winning right now, yo. Yo, how y'all let that kid rap, right? How y'all let him rap and come home to beat? Still get more numbers than us. Break all the records. Why y'all let... Y'all can't stand it or something? Y'all can't stand it. Y'all can't... Listen... You live your you live your whole life, right? You live your whole life trying to be a real nigga. And 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 this is me, this is real Danny shit. Fuck 6ix9ine, right? This is some Daniel Hernandez shit. You live your whole life trying to be a real nigga, trying to be a stand-up tall, loyal guy. To try to shit on a kid like me, to be like, yo, fuck that, he's a rat, he's a rat, he's a rat, he's a rat. To be like, yo, he ratted. To then a rat. A rat like me to come home and still do more numbers than you, I would be mad too. I would be mad too. If a rat came home and did more numbers than me, I would be mad too. I would. I, I promise you I would be mad. If a rat came home to, like, the way I came home and did more numbers than me, I would be mad. I, you have every, every reason to be mad. Every. So, which is, again, some good self awareness from him, of course, is a little bit, you know, it's done in jest. It's done with a little jab in the heart. I think, you know, if you're someone like Meek Mill, you should have never got involved. I think it's we can. It's fair to say that Meek Mill is terrible at the internet, right? We should be able to just categorically say that he's not good at the internet. He should not get involved in internet squabbles or beefs. You know, it never ends well for him. He seems to be really unable to kind of gauge what people are thinking and the current sentiment. He should have just stepped. He should have just viewed. He should have just waited for everyone else to make a decision, a comment first before stepping out. I think the whole like I'm a real guy kind of posturing was never going to work in this sort of like circus essentially coming to the Akasha 6 9 house and trying to be a stand up real guy it's just never going to work there's too much chaos it's either you get involved you cover yourself in paint or you just go home but you can't then start telling people to like get off the couch and you know stop playing the music so loud you just gotta either you know get in line or go home and he just should have just left and just left it as it is and plus you know he's girlfriend just gave birth you know to a child on his the same day as his birthday i mean there should be more things on your mind than what 6ix9ine is doing but again i think it's not even to rag on meek i think he's just a reflection of the industry i think there's some people in the industry again artists mostly who are just so annoyed that he's been able to be successful uh, regardless of his lack of talent maybe you know talent musical talent is that fair maybe musical talent is a fair thing to say because i still think he's a marketing genius but if you some if you think somebody only has like one style one song because the baby's getting that sort of same reaction right if you think he's only got one flow 
and he and he keeps being successful with that one flow and with that one sort of sound. If you're not if you're an artist that has a repertoire and you feel as if people don't look at you the same way, I get why it can be annoying. But I just think there's so much opportunity. There's so much, so many fans out there for everyone to have. There is no point of like I don't know. Will Meek would Meek even want a six nine fan anyway? Would you want that? You probably wouldn't. So why do you care if he's got fans that want to stream his stuff? You know, two million times a day or whatever or get you know whatever many views in an hour who gives a shit because they're never going to listen to his album anyway you know what i mean um i just think it's an interesting case a case study let's see what happens in the next couple of days i'm sure we'll get an album probably dropping soon it seems like he's recorded quite a few bits and bobs from what i've been hearing um he seems like he's uh been hard at work i'm sure there's a whole bunch of videos already filmed too it's interesting that he filmed that video for Gooba. it looks like he filmed it in like a storage container or something in his garden so no one could actually realize where he lives which is far which is cool because I, I was quite worried that he would have filmed it in his garden had this weird view because that's what happened in don't kill cats in it right in netflix where they were able to find the dude who was doing that you know sick shit to cats based on where he was recording his videos at home they were somehow able to like pick out bits of his room triangulate stuff like people on the internet are fucking mad so if he would have been able if he would have filmed something in his garden with a clear view of some sort of landscape someone would have found where he lived and that wouldn't have been a good thing for him so i'm glad that he was kind of safe and able to kind of film it in some storage compartment so he didn't end up you know having the shortest kind of like back fresh home career ever but yeah he's doing what he's doing in it what can you do let's move on next on the list we have ufc 249 happening this sunday finally we have some live sporting event i think Dana White was right in the end, didn't it? He was the, he, he said that UFC will be the first thing to come back and it's happening. UFC is the first thing to come back this Saturday, I think. So early Sunday morning, if you're in the UK, UFC 240, 249 happening um, in Las Vegas. It was meant to be Tony Ferguson and Khabib headlining, but I think Khabib had to drop out essentially because of uh, Ramadan. I'm sure that is the reason why. I think so. I'm not too sure. Maybe if I'm there, maybe it's travel restrictions still from Russia. But regardless, just in case he's stepping in to fight Tony Ferguson for essentially this is the warm up before the Khabib fight. If you're a fan of Tony Ferguson, I think you would say this Justin Gaethje matchup is probably the worst matchup for him stylistically. Right? They both come forward. Justin Gaethje hits probably a lot harder than um, than Khabib would. Although Khabib did rock Connor a few times um, in their recent uh, fight. But you would say stylistically, he would probably favor fighting Khabib than he would fight Justin Gaethje. But again, it's going to be a really, really good fight seeing these two guys squabble or square up. I think Gaethje even said the other day he hopes uh, Tony Ferguson breaks his nose so he can get it fixed because he can't breathe out of it, which is fucking nuts to say. But yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. Justin Gaethje is actually a beast at wrestling, but he never uses it because he specifically wanted to be the highlight. I think this is nickname right the highlight um so he specifically wanted to be that guy and have a highlight reel of knockouts right whether it's submissions or tkos or knockouts and he essentially kind of put the wrestling on the back burner which is interesting because i think most of the time especially the high caliber or the people who are going for championship belts there's an acknowledgement that you have to have some kind of grappling or wrestling ability either if it's defending takedowns or being able to shoot a double or being able to kind of dominate um, uh, in a grapple that will allow you to then mix it up when you're fighting the kind of people in the higher echelons. Because I think you can, for most of the time, from if you're looking at the rankings, you probably could put away everyone from like 20 to maybe 8 position with just your speciality, right? If you're just a kind of, you know... If you're the jujitsu guy or if you're the striking guy you could probably walk through the division depending on who you match up with from 20 to 8 but then the moment you get from the you know 8 upwards i mean over 7 upwards it then becomes a whole different game you know you can't just go in there with your you know with your striking and, and hope you'll win because you're going to meet somebody who's able to match your striking and take you down and then it's you know the game is completely finished um so i would like to see more justin gates wrestling but he's been adamant about not doing that so we're not going to see that and every time we see him training or sparring he's always hitting pads and shit so that won't be a thing um obviously tony ferguson is just an unorthodox 
legend of a dude he looks he fights at somebody who shouldn't be able to fight but he does know how to fight you know you know the kind of kid that he had in class that was always kind of wearing those wacky glasses and he's always got those fingerless gloves on and he's always watching weird karate movies and doing weird you know moves i love the thing that he does when he gets clipped you might see in the gechi fight if he gets clipped and rocked he does this thing where he turns his back then as you're coming he rolls and as you come towards him he does up kicks and just starts moving around so he does it's a calculated thing he does so as soon as he gets rocked he just turns his back to you you get excited because he's turning his back because you know turning his back turning your back is sort of like an admission that you're hurt and you're trying to cover up i think someone said that right if you get caught in a rear naked choke it's usually an indication that the person was on you know getting absolutely smashed so he kind of walks away rolls over and you follow him and as you're following him he kind of up kicks and just get you know completely worked out of the place so it's going to be a really interesting fight man i'm interested to see what happens and again i it's horrible to see them fight i think as a neutral because i'm a fan of both fighters and i would like both to get an opportunity to fight khabib but you know the ufc what can you do if anything it would still happen anyway whoever loses they'll still get an opportunity to fight khabib anyway if khabib ends up losing to the person that wins so um that's the beauty of the ufc there's no like kind of like long drawn out matchmaking process you know people just fight whenever but yeah that's the main fight i think on a card yep that is right because oh okay interesting um so who do i think so the interim belt is actually the main event but the actual belt that's on the line the bantam one is not so then you got Cejudo versus dominic cruz which is an interesting one considering cruz has been out for what two and a half years or something um rock by injury had a couple of bad performances before that as well did he lose to tj dillashaw or is it kobe garbrand maybe kobe garbrand was the last time he fought i think he lost to kobe or cody garbrand um uh which was you know it looked like you know that one of those fights it looked like kind of kamara was maybe tyron woodley he just meet your match and it's maybe those kind of fights are weird because they can sometimes be the point where the fighter decides hey this is enough i'm hanging my gloves up the injuries are coming up they're taking over or it could also be a time for you to maybe say you know what i need to change some things up and i've guessed for dominic cruz especially because he's been commentating and analyzing fights it's impossible not to get that itch again right sitting there watching them fight and seeing the uh, the maybe the holes and the things that you can exploit and maybe as well because i'd imagine seeing that stuff real up front it can maybe give you a different idea of what level they're at and where you are um maybe watching it on tv they look you know way above where you're currently at in terms of skill set and maybe seeing in real life like you know what they're not that much better than me if i go back and train if i'd get this you know this uh, double down on this you've seen their weaknesses you've seen them up close how they you know there's loads of things that he could have kind of got away he kind of pulled away from the fact that he's been analyzing that i'm sure will play play the part in his decision to kind of come back into the ring but i think for so who does also a good chance for him to again solidify his status as the greatest of all time being able to beat somebody like dominic cruz who's been a champion for so long somebody who's kind of well regarded within the uh the sport in general and somebody who has a hell of a record himself in it that's part of the beauty of the ufc because everyone fights everyone if you beat somebody essentially it makes you look better because they know who that person beat right whereas in boxing it's not like that because people pad their records you know you could beat somebody on a one-off it doesn't necessarily mean you're better than the ones that he fought because you know he fought some absolute cans but in the ufc don't that never happens and then you've got or honestly all three of these fights are just insane you've got fucking francis and garner versus rosenstruck it's just gonna be bombs ahoy if you're expecting some kind of grappling match or jujitsu contest good luck it's gonna be bombs ahoy between garner and rosenstruck absolute bombs and i don't know who's gonna win i don't care who wins i'm just gonna be gripped to my seat but it's funny because i remember the last time france maybe maybe in france i don't know who it was he fought but I remember what, wait, staying up to watch it and then going to the toilet, coming back, and it was over. Like, <laughs> so I'm hoping that doesn't happen this time around. Hoping it kind of um, lasts a couple of rounds at least. But yeah, an absolute beast of a card. And then you got Jeremy Stevens, Calvin Qatar, which is going to be a big fight. Greg Hardy, Jorgen De Castro. Greg Hardy's not really had the best UFC career thus far, but again, two big guys uh, throwing complete bombs in the prelims, right? It's the prelims before the main card. You've got fucking Anthony Pettis versus Donald Cerrone, who's going to try and come back off that kind of disappointing performance against Conor McGregor. Um, then you got um, Olenek versus Vadum, another legendary fight, Conor Sparza, Michelle Watson, Uriah Hall, and others. 
it's insane and early premiums we've got here vincent luke nico price bryce mitchell and charles rosa bryce mitchell of course is you know uh fear of fear of one's best friend and you got ryan sapin versus same alvi right sorry ryan span versus sam alvi so a complete com probably one of the best cars i've had in a while probably taint maybe my saying of that is because you know we've not had any live sport for ages but I really can't wait for this fight to kick off, man. It's gonna be incredible. Such a good fight card. Um, Las Vegas, loads of weird protocols that they put into place to make sure no one gets corona or COVID. But judging by what we know now, by the mortality rate of people under a certain age, I'm sure there'll be a lot more. Um, people won't be as worried as it would have been maybe when it was gonna be on. Because it weird how things change in it. When Dana White was harassing and you know shouting into the wind and being all angry at press. It seemed as if he was being irresponsible. And now we have more information. It looks like if you put the right testing in place and you're able to kind of isolate people, there is a hope that with you know some of the fittest, healthiest, athletic people in the world, there is a possibility that it will be okay, especially with the lockdown. I think if this was a regular event with people in the stadium and you had this corona looming, it would be a difficult thing because, you know, there are different points where people can through slip the net and they can be you know it's, 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 other stuff can happen with strangers but i guess if you've just got people involved in the fight only the teams and maybe some uh direct relatives only kind of traveling with them i don't even think even family there i just think it's basically the teams the coaching stuff then i think you can you can put a lid on it to some degree um again fingers crossed for all involved i think it'll be a bad look if they do get anyone getting sick i guess the only thing that would kind of really ruin it if someone got sick and died i think if someone gets sick and they recover no one really give a shit um but yeah hoping everything kind of goes to plan and we get a good event and maybe it can encourage other leagues and other sports to decide on when to get things started again but um you never know what it, probably it's a governmental thing and i think the fact that the u.s has been a bit gung-ho and a bit second amendment about the whole thing it might be a good thing for them and they're able to kind of push for a few things and i'm assuming las vegas isn't the bastion of health and safety itself anyway so it's probably an easier place to kind of get those things done anyway um let's move on a bit let's move the camera there let's make that a bit centered is that yeah there you go is that centered or is that on bring that there you go. anyway let's move on what else i want to speak about here for you yeah this is a sad one isn't it so this video came out right maybe a few a couple of days ago and i saw it on twitter first and i tried to look for it again and it got deleted and i had to go to someone's instagram profile to go get it but i finally found it but essentially someone made a video um clipping together these video clips of prominent people in electronic music carl cox seth Troxler, some other randoms um essentially pleading to the fans this might have been during uh the whole bank and promo days right it might have been during i'm not too sure but essentially pleading with the fans to buy um music or to buy some mixes and that those proceeds that they would uh, spend would go towards uh helping out the tour manager of said artist whether it was a singular tour manager that handled every single artist or it was a you know in tour manager for each one it still just seemed like a it seemed like a parody it seemed like a joke it seemed like something that would be like a, a tiktok video or something like a you know like a wind up but it was real and it's disappointing especially for the fact that it involves someone like a Seth I think Carl Cox you know I've never been a fan of Carl Cox I've always thought he's a bit of a wally he just reminds me of those kind of coconut black dudes that we have in the UK um you know that speak a certain way that don't know anything about black culture that hang out with you know people that might have national front or bmp tattoos on their calves and shit um he made some ridiculous comments back in the day when the whole london riots were happening on the ra podcast i think they asked him about it and he had no idea what was going on right he, he's so dis so like detached from reality so detached from the everyday world that he had no idea there was any riots in the uk he sort of made this kind of half a half hide attempt to kind of have an opinion and then he kind of got to it and he was like oh yeah it's because they listen to all that r&b and stuff it's that like r&b he didn't have even have he didn't even have the the mental capacity to stretch towards hip hop or grime or something. He said R and B like UK people, UK kids are listening to too much fucking Black Street, and that's what's leading them to going to you know looting shopping centers after uh, a young man gets shot by the police. It's like okay, dude. So since then he's been you know he's been done with me to be honest. And again, you know it's it's only one DJ. You don't need to hear that sort of music. I don't want to hear this big black dude with his arms stretched out behind the decks like you know that that famous kind of EDM step thing 
fucking like you know giving himself a fucking uh blowjob on the stage i don't need it so i wasn't a fan ever of his anyway so to see him doing that it's all well and good in it because he he occupies that sort of like mixed mag kind of like um edm crew uh sphere you know it's all big lights and you know kooky hats and shit and all that sort of you know smoking all that nonsense so let him do what he's doing there but see someone like a Seth trucks again involved that's a that's the disappointing thing i guess we shouldn't be surprised because Seth, anyone that's a bit social justice social justice right and preachy online and kind of haranguing people and telling people what to do and what they're doing wrong usually by and large has a lot of skeletons in their closet right and usually when they get called out for things that they're doing that isn't you know quite kosher they no, they're not self-aware they're not able to kind of you know acknowledge okay cool you guys are right man i, I fucked up but put my hands up i apologize i'll do right next time they're usually unable to see that because you know if you can't if, you, if you're able to kind of be so uh if you're able to be so quick to judge others it's very unlikely that you're then going to be able to listen or to be able to even comprehend the fact that you could do anything wrong because in your eyes you know why can't they just be more like me you know what i mean it's that kind of weird um narcissistic kind of pov but let's see the video actually of what actually happened right so this is the actual roundup of it this guy called is it john ask you i'll give him a little bit of a shout out i think he made the video and it's a really good kind of roundup of the whole situation let me pause it get get there so i'll get up on the screen doom yeah so this is yeah. And the Martinez brothers too, man. I love those guys as well. Why are they getting involved in this nonsense, man? Come on. Ugh. Okay. Let's go back on. Let me get this straight. The richest DJs on the planet are asking. Us so a lot of them are out of work. Who are all skint at this straight. The richest DJs on the planet are asking. The general public who are all skint at the moment. A lot of them are out of work. A lot of them have lost their jobs. A lot of them are on reduced rates of income. The richest DJs in the world are asking the general public to buy music to support their tour managers. Why? Why aren't they covering their tour manager's costs and giving away these mixes for free? Or charging money and giving that money to the medical services, the NHS and every other country's equivalent? These are guys with multiple millions of pounds, euros, dollars in the bank, and they're asking the general public to keep their tour managers afloat? Why don't you fucking pay for them? Why have the public got to pay for them? You've got millions. You fucking pay for them. We're begging you, support our tour managers. Support the guys that fly all the way around the world 50 times a month in economy class while I'm sipping champagne up the front, not giving a fuck and posting some utter horseshit about the struggle of humanity. Please give these guys some of your money that you don't have. If you don't, we're going to have to use our own money. Please don't make me pay them. And it's funny, I'll stop it there, but the interesting part about it is that of course, you know, it's a ludicrous suggestion to even suggest that fans should be somehow uh, supplementing the income or supporting the tour managers of these artists. Let, fair enough if it was an up and coming artist on the label, right? Um, Dixon did a really cool live stream with Boiler Room a few weeks or a couple of weeks back, maybe a few weeks back actually, where he essentially did a mix and played loads of exclusive tunes that were then going to be sold on an EP. So it was a good way to kind of, you know, in order to kind of to flex his muscles as a DJ and also to kind of give people on EP who are lesser known a bit of shine and then you go and buy the 
the the tape route after the stream is ended right so that's a bigger artist using his platform in order to kind of chuck some coins uh towards the direction of people who are coming up in the scene and haven't necessarily got the income or have or been hit the hardest during this whole coronavirus lockdown thing so a clever way and doesn't really involve you having to beg and plead with your fans in order to buy albums for you to support because you know the natural thing someone would have said to Dixon was like you're a millionaire too why should we do that but he did it in a clever way but i don't understand why they thought this is a good idea number one how how are they how are they um able to sell a mix with other people's music on bank up it doesn't make any sense that way if they're able to do that then that's you know legitimately pretty unethical anyway right if you are uh talking about you know uh artist royalties and people being paid for their work and shit it just doesn't make any sense how you can just make a mix and sell it on bank line. but whatever if you can do that fair enough but still the way it's done the way they kind of haranguing and essentially pleading with the public to support them is just insane because you could ask these artists why aren't you supporting your own tour manager and again it's your tour manager it's not even something that's the main part of your team it's an extension some people have m managers that just do everything right they do the a and r ring they fucking book stuff they are the what you call it they yeah they, they book everything for you they're your best friend they're your psychiatrist and you have a separate person not your manager day to day not your booking agent a tour manager that you need to support it's just insane it boggles the mind and again it makes me understand now why some people are so uh against the whole ra rhetoric of like let's save the scene and if you notice Re resin advisor hasn't posted about it mix mag didn't post about it dj mag didn't post about it those big publications that essentially prop up these djs and make them seem as if they're like you know uh they walk on water whatever it may be or the ones that are kind of calling out certain artists for some things that they do wrong didn't want to touch their story at all why because i guess there are some artists on the kind of lower level who are also doing the same thing right this idea that we should the fans should be supporting these artists and kind of uh providing them with a stipend or something and usually it's not even a it's not a bad thing to ask for money from your fans do what you want to do but usually the artists that are bigger than pleading the most are the ones that aren't even providing the fans any kind of uh what would you say they're not providing them with any reason why they should right when you're on patreon you have tiers of backing support and actual stuff that you want to give your fans based on the tiers based on how much they donate right you might say there's exclusive mix you get a week you might get a live q a i might write you a blog i might upload some archive pictures whatever right there's something that you're going to get from a t-shirt some poster whatever they don't do any of that shit they just want you to support their life support their lifestyle because i'm a dj as if that occupation is you know as if anyone gives a shit now right people are going through whatever they're going through in life and you actually legitimately and there's like a t like this is the best time as well to actually see who's about it and who actually is loving the scene who wants to do who actually is about the culture because the people that are are just filming in their bedroom not asking anyone for nothing playing records because that's what they would do if they were getting paid 50 euros or 5,000 euros but the ones that are doing this sort of shit have essentially found out that it's a it's a hustle in it like they've been able to coast by because again most of those big dudes don't go record shopping right they're not really part of the scene they just stay in hotels they don't go to parties they don't dance and shit they don't really you know again they don't participate in culture anymore because they're too big i guess in some respects they get sent loads of demos by some of the biggest up-and-coming artists in the world producers who are trying to get themselves on which essentially kind of uh, uh that entry level of sending something to an artist means that you're going because usually if you're somebody that's about it and really wants to make a career for yourself you're not going to just spam a record label with shit that you made you know yesterday you're going to be able you're going to have an actual background in making music and you're going to send them the best stuff you've, you've got so they're getting the best music sent that record to their inboxes right from labels from up-and-coming producers and they're just picking that stuff and playing it or worse yet they're going on beat pool and just playing the top 100 tunes of that particular month or that particular week so they're not making any effort whatsoever so they've realized it's just a hustle it's just like a it's a it's a big hustle it's a big game right they get paid millions of dollars to go or thousands of dollars to go play the festival which are all well and deserving to do but then to do that because we know they we all know that most of them are essentially stealing a living but we're okay with it because we have other people that we can kind of distract ourselves with and you know everyone can do what they want to do but then to turn around when you're stealing a living and ask us fans to support your tour manager is insane legitimately insane and again 
you haven't heard a pip a peep squeak from seth i think from now i think he's made some comment he made like a statement in a comment thread or someone commented or something but he hasn't said anything publicly he hasn't recorded another video he hasn't made a massive stink up on social about it you know when he was kind of ripping on those tech house people on social media like some of this it's again because i'm a big fan of seth doctors i've said it from the beginning like i've i loved him but this dude man he just he makes it so hard to be a fan of his and and now it makes all his kind of haranguing of lena kravitz because she wanted to you know lean into her sex appeal during her kind of ra uh scenes video it makes that whole stink that he raised upon that really dumb as well in it like who are you to begrudge a woman for trying to lean into something that people are finding compelling it is what it is isn't it like issue and 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 now the 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 kind of record books have shown that nina kravis is still one of the biggest and best eaters we have in a scene regardless of what's hanging between her legs but she just happens to be attractive why wouldn't you lean into it and he was one of the people that was kind of you know pointing fingers and saying that you know what's the scene devolved into and all this sort of shit and now look at what you're doing asking fans to support the lifestyle or asking fans to support your tour manager it's like why don't you do it yourself mate like why are we even having to hear about this why aren't they just doing this behind the closed doors it just doesn't make any sense in it but then i think there's a little update regarding the actual issue here on via a blog post i think i found this is from the the dancing astronaut right so i think they kind of made an update regarding the whole issue and i think he must have said something i'm sure he did right um where is it this is from dancing astronaut let me see if i can get the link up here from john askew so this is the post that he made on social about it this is an utter scandal out of desperation of for income in these trying times tour managers of some of the world's richest djs launched a mixed series to try and raise donations for the public to keep themselves afloat while out of work and then the millionaires they work for have the audacity to beg and plead to the general public to get involved okay cool so i didn't know that so that first bit is okay right i think in my opinion again it's a bit slimy and if anything it makes the artist look horrible the tour managers if they're in a if they're in a sticky position and they want to make some money and they have some pictures of these guys and they find it they get the permission of them to kind of sell them on to make some money fair but it still makes them look bad right if they're having to sell fucking decks and shit and that stuff it makes the actual dj that they work with look horrible because you shouldn't be putting them in that position but when the djs get involved and beg the fans to support these guys and buy that stuff that's when it gets out of line that's when it's just absolutely ridiculous that doesn't make any sense let's continue here so it says so these questions are not covering the basic cost of their loyal warriors that babysit them 24 seconds because that job is not easy being a tour manager of a internationally recognized dj especially somebody that's that that much lacking in self-awareness that they would film a selfie video of themselves haranguing and begging and coercing and pleading with fans to fucking you know support the lifestyle of a person they don't know it's just insane right? obviously you don't know the dj but at least you have some sort of affection to them right you buy their tunes you support them at shows you buy their merch but a tour manager can you even name one do you even know what tour manager even looks like i don't know like what do they have lanyards and shit i don't know do they wear those weird those weird um fucking berets i don't know what tom what a fucking a train music tour manager looks like are they one of the hundreds of you know italian looking people behind the decks at circo loco is that a tour manager i don't know so it continues here um and not only that but they're asking you for the out of work broke skin general public to put your hand in your pocket to help cover those costs so they don't have to am i losing my mind here or did i just watch what actually happened i'm actually truly lost for words shocked and a little sad that's that's for me too because i think you would expect this from like martin garrix right that kind of crew of people but you know they probably might they might be mint you'd expect that from that kind of level of dj right um would you expect it from a Tiesto? Maybe even Tiesto. No, Tiesto's not that dumb. He wouldn't do that, right? He's got too many people around him who would like, be like, what are you doing? But you'd expect that from that kind of level of people. But from Seth and that, Martinez brothers? <sighs> um, some of these uh, were heroes to me, but now any respect I had is lost for sure. 
And if you're one of the top managers who work for the DAs of video, I feel deeply sorry for you too. You're at the side wiping their asses every second of every day while on tour, and now they won't repay the favor by helping you with a few chunks of change for their vast wealth. Exactly. It's as scandalous as Victoria Beckham trying to furlough Hula staff so that the taxpayer could cover their cost. Luckily, though, a, she saw sense and reversed her request when public outrage uh, subtly reminded her she's a fucking millionaire and a hundred times over, so you can cover those costs out of coins in her solid gold bag. This lockdown brings out the good uh, but the horrors and others if you're going to donate to anything donate to nhs or your own country's frontline medical services now again i think that's a little bit virtue signally right you, if you want to donate to the nhs do it but you know if somebody that you like and support their work if they want if they're asking you to support them in this testing time so that they can continue making that work after these times are over and you want to do it more than welcome to do it i just think the level of for it to come from the millionaire DJ's end to employ those people is just lacking in any. It's like I don't know. It's like Richard Branson doing a, uh, a you know, a video, a GoFundMe for his staff or some shit. It's just it just makes no sense in it. It's always gonna. It's not gonna sit well with people, um, especially considering. You know, most people would agree that most DJs are exorbitantly overpaid, especially when you hit the kind of top 5%. It is what it is. We're not debating whether or not you should get money or not, but let's just say, let's all agree. We know most of them are overpaid for what they do, right? Especially if you're in the scene, especially if you're in a popping metropolitan city with a good local dance community, electronic music scene, you would know that there's many people within your scene who are far superior than some of these people in terms of DJing, in terms of ability to read a crowd, in terms of, you know, how to just rock a place, whatever it may be, but they're not at that level. It's just what it is, and you can't really be saying it's fair or not. But you know, DJing isn't like fucking playing a guitar, right? If if you have the musical acumen and you're able to commit some time to it, you can make some really exponential leaps in your development as an artist over a short period of time because most people are just phoning in most people are just going on charts looking at whatever else is playing and then playing that that's what most people do but if you actually want to be a dj you can get really good in a very short space of time it's not that deep of a skill so for those people who make really high amounts of money in a switch in a skill that most people can do if you've got any kind of time and ability to listen to music and have good taste it just it beggars belief in it it beggars belief really um anyway continues here um Carl Cox and Ellen Fitzpatrick and Seth Chocolate took time to clear up the air of social media archive. Many of their responses aimed to distance themselves and involvement of the efforts. So that's the thing. They didn't, because I think there is something, because even though he kind of ribbed Victoria Beckham about what she did, you know, trying to further her staff, um, there is something quite admirable. I think Tottenham Hotspur did the same thing too, right? They got a lot of backlash based on their decision to furlough their whole staff or to sack people. I don't know what it was, but essentially they reversed the decision. Um, there is something honourable about under knowing that, hey, even though it's, you know you shouldn't be shamed into doing anything, I think there is something quite admirable about being an adult about it and being like, hey, I judged it wrong and I've now noticed how bad what I did was and I'm going to reverse tact or I wasn't aware of the other parts, facts of the matter and I'm going to do something different now based on the information I've got. It's okay to change your mind. No one's saying you shouldn't change your mind. But to suddenly try and distance yourself from this issue, because how else could you interpret that post? How would you interpret that video that I played? How would you interpret a video of these icons in the electronic music scene, right? So filming yourself a video telling you to donate and buy these mixes of these from these random pages or on Bandcamp because it's going to go to supporting their tour managers. So <laughs> many of their responses aimed at distance of an involvement with the efforts. However, on the whole, they sought to make it clear that their managers were taken care of during difficult. So why are they asking for money then if they're taken care of? And it continues here. Carl Cox, what did he say? Wow, he looks like some social... And he's not even him taking a picture. It's his mate. Who's his mate? Is that the tour manager taking a picture with him? He's such a wally, you know. He is such a donut. What do you say? Wow, it looks like social media crazy train has gone on overdrive once again. Um, I've never seen anything blown up so out of proportion without context. A group of the hardest working tour managers out there wanted to get creative and have some fun by getting together and seeing who could actually DJ. What? They asked me to support them as I support other touring our DJs this week. Huh? After a week throughout the year, all of us did, all of us did that without too much thought or hesitation through our social media channels and gave them a mix for one of our shows 
there was no suggestion ever made that there was a cover wages that is simply ridiculous and i feel sad and that this has been suggested we look after our family through thick and thin just as it should be i've been working with my tour manager ian for 20 years and we've been the best of friends ever long. We've literally seen and done it all. Ian is one of the best. Well, Ian, of course, being looked after throughout this crazy situation, along with the rest of my time in college. I'm sh- college colleagues, sorry. I'm sure the tour managers involved in the TNT sessions can agree that, in hindsight, the video they put out could have been presented and worded better. But who put out the video? Who made? Who said those words on the video? Though this is insane. The level of spin. What? in a better way but these things happen people make mistakes to rip it apart in a way has been done so many outliers not cool no i don't see any reason to raise more negativity in such a present critical time speculating over something that wasn't done and supporting the love let's get back to music folks love carl cox fuck you you absolute wanker oh god he's a disgusting human isn't he they ask, for, they ask fans for money and then now they're saying that they didn't ask fans for money. Like, this whole explanation is insane. So what? A group of our tour managers are out there wanted to get creative. Okay, cool. And they have some fun by getting together and seeing who could actually DJ. So if that's the fact, there should have just been a live stream of tour managers with pictures, fucking lifestyle images of the people they manage behind them spinning on Twitch or on YouTube live stream. That's what it would have been, right? And then someone votes and says, oh, I like him or I like her. That's what it should have been. But it wasn't that. It was pe- videos of them telling people to go and buy mixes on Bandcamp because it's going to support them. Behind the scenes. That's what Seth Chopper said, didn't it? Are people behind the scenes that make it happen? It's like, what? They asked me to support them. And as they support us, Tori did. So we went out. So what? So, uh, so all us did with that intention. There was no suggestion. Da, 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 da. So they sent them mixing. That make yeah. Anyway, he's talking out of his ass. So I'm not going to waste any more mental gymnastics than that and if it's patrick said what please read what do you say in here please read yeah all right cool i'm reading bruv what's that as patrick said let's get this to load up honestly man if anything again this should just be an illustration same way how you know okay it's been deleted cool well we know he didn't say nothing it's the same way how you know this whole like uh holy didn't doubt ra people who haven't said a word about the issue kept completely stum, not said anything you have to kind of look at it and be like, okay, so what's, what is Save Our Scene? Is Save Our Scene watching Peggy Goo DJ somewhere on top of a hotel or top of an amazing apartment somewhere in South Korea? Or is Save Our Scene actually supporting people that put on raves next to where you live and actually give a shit about your local community? They bring up, they bring up support the artists that mean a lot to you. They are, you know, providing a safe space for people who can't necessarily go out in other places in the world, what is actually saving the scene? What is it? Because if the scene is this, I want nothing to do with it. If this is the scene, if this is what it is, I want nothing to, if it's fucking paragraphs of Carl Cox trying to explain to me why it makes sense for his tour managers to be posting videos of him asking people to buy mixes online with unlicensed music for us so we can support his tour manager. If that's what the scene is, I don't want any parts of it. But if the scene is supporting people from the local scene who are actually doing something, actually making meaningful changes fair enough but if it's all this nonsense count me out of it and he continues here seth seth trucks the kind of his seth trucks statement i have to say something as this needs to be said this these this is people helping each other personally my tour manager is taking care of so why are you in it then why do you keep saying personally as if like you're not involved your face is there and you're talking about it hey guys it's unprecedented like what a nonce um, TM is taken care of and not ta- and not part of this group but I gave them a mix and helped out because that's what you do when someone asks you for favour during a pandemic so if I DM'd Steph now and asked him for a tenner he'd give it to me because I'm asking for a favour alright mate cool um, That what uh, and that what all the DJ in that video did no one can talk about someone's else situation if they don't know it <sighs> I hate all these people. So instead of being a bunch of moaning critics, moaning critics, imagine Steph Troxler, the hubris on this guy. He's one of the biggest moaners online. He's always crying about something, right? Whether it's tech house DJs making a living, right? Whether it's Nina Kravitz getting half naked, 
whether it's whatever something's going on the scene, whether it's ragging on Steve Aoki. Again, if Steve Aoki did this, what would Seth Chokstar would have said if Steve Aoki did this? He hates Steve Aoki. Steve Aoki does nothing wrong. He hits people in the face with cakes and gets a couple of lawsuits here and there. He makes terrible music, but whatever. He seems like a chill dude. He occupies his own space. He doesn't bother anybody. If Steve Aoki did this, what would Seth Chokstar say? And he continues, no one can talk about something, so it said fucking relax about a few guys selling 10 mixes for 5 bucks to make some extra cash. Yeah, because 10 mixes for 5 bucks is definitely going to help them out in the long run, isn't it, right? Yeah, for sure, because when one person buys it, they're not just going to rip it and upload it online. Yeah, cool. 5 bucks is definitely going to be a game changer for their lives. Like, what are you talking about, man? Why can't you give them the 5 bucks? Why can't you just say, hey, take a down that post? I didn't really see what you were doing there and let me just send you the money. Why can't you just do that? And just say, hey guys, don't just be on the scene. I didn't know what the video was gonna do. Pans up, I got that one wrong. Why are you why are you trying to rationalize this and trying to make it seem as if we're the dum dums? Like who cares? It continues here. Wanna be outraged? Look at the world right now. Oh, I love that. I love that what a bit what about is a minute. I love that. I love the moving of the goalposts. I love when people do that, right? When you point out something they're doing wrong and then they're like, oh, I don't know why you're getting so hot and bothered. Look at what I'm happening in the world. It's like, go and jump off a hill somewhere, you absolute tosser. And it continues here. Want to be outraged? Look at the world right now. And this is morally outrageous. Have a word of yourself, people. <sighs> this should be, again, no judgment, I guess. Well, I've made loads of judgments, but I think as... um. As this guy said, John S. in his post uh, at the bottom here, uh, the lockdown brings out the good in some, but the horrors in others, right? And I think, if anything, all these things happening, I think we should be, this is a time you have a legit reason to be angry. Because online, I don't, I'm not really a fan of people being outraged and throwing a fit and shit. But if you want to be outraged about things and about how your government has kind of dealt with the whole pandemic and, you know, the lack of leading voices in science, the fact that science has been politicized, the lack of government funding, the lack of support, the lack of PPE, uh, you know, the misinformation, uh, the where we are in the world now because of the, you know, fervent pursuit for globalization this idea that we're going to be this whole global citizens and we're going to you know a world without borders has put us in a position where essentially one virus emanates from one place and this decimates the entire world's economy all these things that you've been led to believe that should be good for us have been turned out to be wrong and these people that you hold up in high regard who are meant to be leading the way have proved to be inadequate or to be uh you know to not be fit for purpose right they don't know what they're doing they haven't got a clue this should be a time for you to log in your head the people that have done the right thing during this time and prior and you've reacted the right way and the people that have reacted the wrong way so that when everything goes back to normal you remember those names and instead of har harassing them online and you know uh being noisy vote with your feet vote with your wallet and just don't support them so vote with your feet means vote them out of power vote with your wallet don't support them and completely ignore their existence so that those people can kind of get phased out and we can be left with people in the scene who actually give a shit right who are actually one of us who don't you know who aren't that detached from reality right who have some sort of self-awareness who are able to give back in an actual real way that's not um, some performance online right that's what we should be doing just remember everyone that did wrong and remember everyone that did right so that when things reopen we can support the people who are actually doing things the right way because i think this is the problem as much as much as this is as, as as annoying as this is i've wasted the best part of 20 plus minutes talking about people doing things the wrong way in the scene where i should be using my platform to promote people that are doing the right thing but i'm hoping going forward we put more light on the people actually who actually give a shit about the scene not people like this because this is just this it's not even again that's what he said is right it's just saddening in it because it's not it's something that you could easily avoid if you had some level of self-awareness but they don't and then you're trying to lecture us as like as if we're the ones overreacting that is insane that's insane but hey what can you do um i think i'm gonna end it there because i'm getting a bit too hot and bothered and my forehead's getting all shiny but as the excellent thing show episode number 311 311 as per usual um you can find this podcast and other podcasts available on all your streaming platforms if you're first time listening make sure you hit that subscribe button hit like and um, leave me a comment um of course if you were to listen via the podcast app share it with your family and friends and i'll see you guys again soon i think i'm going to do a live stream for the ufc 249 so keep an eye out for that one i'll announce that soon 
I'll do a live stream for that and upload it and get it out to all you guys. But until then, see you guys very, very soon. Take care. Be safe. Peace.